Um, hey, how are you? <laughs> I said that early. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing, chilling. Thank, I do want to thank you first and foremost for tapping in with the DGB fam. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all for having me. You're welcome. And um, I do want to ask, like, how are you holding up during the quarantine? Because I know it's like crazy times right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been chilling. Uh, recording this at my house. Stuff like that. Quarantining. Have yeah. you did, have you did like did you sneak out a little bit to like do a little self care stuff or you've been just yeah for in sure the house? yeah for sure for sure for sure yeah I went uh I've been doing that I've been doing a little stuff not too much though yeah and where exactly are you from I know you're from Maryland but like what city yeah I'm from PG County mm hmm. That's like by uh like by like the uh Redskins Stadium. Mm hmm Probably like twenty minutes from DC. Like two feet of Lago. And how was it for you growing up there? Oh, it was cool. Like it was cool. I mean, I was chilling, like it was it was it was all right. I, mean, I ain't really start getting in trouble till I was like a teenager. Moving around doing stuff. But it was good though. Yeah. What type of like trouble and stuff was you into? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, selling, <laughs> like selling and stuff like that. Yeah. Just running around, just running around in the street, just doing like young nigga shit. That's it. Yeah. And how old were you when you officially jumped off the porch? Mm, I don't know. Uh. I've been bad, but I'm gonna <laughs> say probably like when I was 15, 16, I got locked up for like a temp. So I was like, man, fuck that shit. I'm in the street. So whenever you were locked up at 15, like when you were inside there, did you regret all the decisions that you made leading up to that point? Uh, <clears throat> not for real. Like, I felt like it's something I had to do. I ain't really regret it. I just lay with I just lay with the punch. I just roll with the punches for real. I ain't regret it at all. What's the biggest obstacle you had to overcome to get to this point now? Uh just like myself, like just pushing myself, not getting comfortable and stop doubting myself. And just like, I was just, like, I'm really my biggest, my biggest obstacle for work, so just, like, overworking myself, working harder for work. So whenever, you know, you do start getting a little doubt and you are, like, feeling a little discouraged, what is something that you do to kind of get you back in the groove again? Uh, I don't know. I guess, like, keep recording. Like, mm -hmm. just keep recording, making hard music. You can't fly, like stuff like that. I don't know. I don't never get out like completely on my groove like that, but shit like that though. Now I watch a ton of interviews and I know like some of the interviews that I watch, you know, the rappers be on like lean, mm -hmm. pill, all type of stuff. And I watched your interview that you did with Adam, and I saw that you used to do Zans, but you'd stop. Now, what was it that made you completely stop doing them? Uh, I don't know. I kept getting in trouble. And most, like, people be telling me stories about shit that I did. And I'd be like, man, I ain't do that shit. And they like, man, I ain't do that shit. So I'm like, no, I can't keep popping that shit because I'm going to get in trouble. So... That was really it, just pushing the pills out. So I'm like, I can't even have So whenever like you do do that, does it completely like wipe out your memory? I don't know, not, not like that. But it's like, you just have. So something you normally do, you want to do it because you have. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you'll just be chilling, but you smacked so you get it turned up. Yeah. Well, that's really good that you know you got off because 
I would say a lot of people are addicted to pills like that, and you were strong. Yeah, it's too late. If you still doing that, you late, man. Like, mm-hmm. That shit wow. That's awesome. I think it's really good that you know you took some time and you was like, nah, I'm not with that no more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I you just got to go to be a man for real. Now, what would you say is one of the biggest lessons you've learned in the streets? Don't trust people. Oh, you can I need you to, uh, I need you to elaborate on that because I am such a like guarded person and it'd be mm-hmm. really hard to trust people. Like when I say it'd be hard, it's so hard trusting people. Yeah, it's like you gotta know like some people you be nice to people, but some people got like different motives. Mm-hmm. You might think y'all like hit with it the whole time. They just bet you to be doing something else. So it's just like just don't trust people, bro. Everybody be for self, especially now we all grown keeping our kids. So they end up winning. So how are you with making like new friends? Are you open to making new friends, especially with you being in the industry, or are you kind of distant, like nah? Uh, I'm cool with making new friends. It's just I know how far our relationship will be for real. But I'm cool with it though. I ain't no distant person, like I ain't gonna fuck with nobody. I be still fucking with people. Now, how long have you been making music? Uh, mm-hmm. Since I was a kid, for real. But I started taking it serious since I was like 18. And what inspired you to take rap serious while you were locked up? Uh, just seeing, just seeing, like, all the opportunities I was missing, like, it was the last that I could be doing, a lot of money I could be making shows, like, now I'm just going to I'm just coming, just coming up. Now, do you wish that you would have pursued it a little earlier in life? Uh, not for real, I feel like it was perfect timing. Mm-hmm. But I, I still had to mature and learn, and just learn more. And I know your signs with Rock Nation. Um, out of all the labels that probably hit you up, why was Rock Nation your choice? I don't just feel like they was like they really wanted me there. Like other labels, they really just they really wasn't like we was connected to uh, Rock Nation. It was more like on a personal level. Like I feel like I wanted to be there. And did you get to have, you know, the legendary dinner with Jay-Z? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to the Rock Nation dinner. Oh, man, how was that? Yeah, it was lit. I met everybody. It was turned up. I don't know, stuff like that. I still, I still be like, damn, that shit's crazy. It definitely was, like, overwhelming, though. Yeah, were you a little nervous when you walked in? Like, dang. Not really nervous, it's just like, I ain't never been in no place like, and did nothing like that before, so it was just, like, damn, I don't know what, I'm, what to do, but to just sit back and just chill, just catch the vibe, bro. Did he give, happen to give you any advice? No, nah, not for real, it was just like a big, like, handshake, like, just acknowledging it, bro. Now, I'm very curious to know, what is the music scene like in the DMV area right now? And it's kind of, it's a, like, it's a lot of young rappers. Uh, it's a lot, it's a lot of uh, veteran rappers, too, that's still working. Mm-hmm. Hoping the young, the young, young rappers, so I feel like it's, like it's good right now. It's definitely at a good place. It's certain rappers much like, uh, Messing with each other, like cool and making music, so that's good. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, like it's different from what it used to be. Are you guys pretty supportive up there of each other's music careers? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Like, for like, for the most part. 
Now, I do want to talk about your EP that you dropped, Death Wish. And you mm-hmm. know, you spelled it instead of like death, you spelled it D E A F. Yeah. So, what was the significance of that for you? Just like, just death to everybody, pins, everybody just talking, like that type. Like, I don't care what nobody got to say no more. I'm just doing me. You feel me? Like, just not caring what people are saying. Well, yeah and you stated that you spent more time on this project than you have on any other project that you've released and why is that not really like my much time but really like spend more time like really instead of like they go to song 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 but really like sitting down listening to the music picking up producers like really being hands-on with it for real. This is like my first time really being hands-on instead of having everybody help me, you feel me? Yeah. So would you say like <laughs> this project really helped you expand your mind creatively? Yeah, for sure. And just uh, on a nut, like on a boss level, just like just hand-picking beat and, and just really like perfecting your craft, perfecting your project, you know what I'm saying? Take your time with it. And um, so I want to touch on this because I found out that it when you drop music, it's really based off of the timing, which is why it takes a long time for artists to like put it out. So do you agree that the reason why it takes so long is because you guys wait for the perfect time to put out a project? Um. Nah, not for not not for me. It'd be really like uh it'd be really like the process of getting everything approved and getting all the paperwork done with producers and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That stuff take time, like like a month to two weeks to two months. You feel me? Depending on how professional people work. So that's really like how the process really is. It'd be frustrating sometimes. <laughs> Man, how do you like? Ooh, cause I know I would probably get real, real impatient. How do you keep your patience during the whole process? Uh, I don't know. Just cause I know I'm a good rapper, and I know it's easy for me, so it really don't be no frustration. So, and I know that this how it works. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just me. So you know what I'm saying? It ain't like. Somebody hand picking me like you gotta do something like this, like that. This is what everybody gotta go through. So I feel like I can't be out here whining and crying about it. I'm gonna just make sure that my music is the best and then let it go through the process. Now you've worked with OGZ and Shoreline. What is your relationship with them? Those are my man. Those are my Mexican homies. <laughs> Those are my Mexican homies. I fuck with them a long way. And you even went on tour with them. How was it touring with them? It was lit. It was something like I ain't never seen before. And I appreciate them like having me on that joint. For real, for real. Now, you also recently dropped a single called Bad News. How was the creative process for that one? Uh... It was like the same with the whole tape. I'm just hand picking beats. I recorded that like in my house. Just recording in the house. Working. And with bad news, it's also leading up to an out an EP that you're about to drop called Dope on a Spoon. Now that's about to be my album, Dope on the Spoon. Your album, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me. No, you good. Your, your album. How would you say that this album? compared to all your other ones is going to be a little different? Uh, Because, like, I did the EP, but I just, I, I feel like I picked I pick harder songs on my album. Mm-hmm. Like, my EP, that was just a warm-up. You know what I'm saying? In my album, I really, it's songs that I really, like, been working on on, on the album. And I do want to ask you, how it, important is it for let us inside of the DMV. 
Say it again. How important it is for what? How important is it for you to let us inside the world of the DMV? Man, it's major because I feel like it's only a, it's it's only a few amount of people who could really really show you the DMV the right way. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that is definitely like my job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, and I've also encountered a lot of DMV rappers. Like I've been learning so much about the DMV area as well. Like I recently learned about the go-go dancing scene, like yeah. all of that stuff. And uh -huh. I would say you guys, like y'all are definitely up next for sure. Yeah, but that been, that been going on though. I know, but you know, well, I, live in, I live in the South. I don't know nothing about yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, but it's definitely lit. Is that that's what make that's what makes the whole DMV different. Mm -hmm. You got our own type of music, own type of style, everything different. And I heard the creatives out there, like you guys have a lot of creatives out there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. So that I can't even name too many. Now, um, talking, of, I do want to talk about your first single that's on the album. Um, and is there any features on the album that you can reveal? Uh, no, I'm not going to reveal right now. It's, a, it's definitely a couple features, though. You said it's definitely that's, a couple features? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Pee Wee going to be on there for sure, though. Pee Wee? Long way? Yeah, yeah. Long uh -oh. way be on there for sure. You, you coming like that? Yeah, for sure. Fact. <laughs> Um, who are some producers? I say that just cause, just cause you from the south though, so I had to tell you that. You had to. Know. Gonna be on there. So how do you like working with artists from the south and producers? Cause I know you used to work with Zaytoven at one point before too. Yeah, it just comes from like uh, going up on Gucci, like stuff like that. Listening to mm -hmm. Gucci Mane, listening to Zaytoven going up. So it definitely got major love for the south. I'm sorry. Could you hold on for like two seconds? My daughter then walked up in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, it's cool. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, my bad. My daughter was up here like running her mouth. Nah, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, like you were saying, like um speaking on Zaytoven and Gucci Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh so like I got major love for the stuff just going up listening, listening to them. And they told me extra cool, so when we met, like he real cool, so we definitely locked into life. Mm-hmm. Now, who are some producers that you've been working on, working with for this new album release? Uh, Nam, Hitman, Hitman Audio, uh, Flashman. And that's it. Like, they hot. That's all I'm really been working with. They hot. Like, we got a cool bond, so it's easy working with them. You also have your own label called Rich Shooters. Yeah. I really want to know about that. Like, what made you want to start, well, branch out and start your own label? Uh, just like, just trying to do me and just having like a different vision of like how I'm trying to do stuff and like how I want, like, like how I don't want to like how I want to do the movement or like which direction I wanted to go in. So just having that in mind, I'm like, I gotta start something new, some fresh, something like that's really lit. And that's when I came with like real shoes, like we turned up. Now, what are some? Who are some artists that are on that label that you have? Uh, Bob, Son, Young Manny. Those just the two right now. They're taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? They're really mm -hmm. taking it serious. So I only really got two artists for me taking it serious, but it's more like a family. For real. I got my brothers, my mother, real shoes. You feel me? Mm -hmm. so we, it's all it's turned up. <laughs> now with having your own label is there any pressure that like your artists have to be top dogs out here nah, I, I, it, it used to be like that but now i just be like just do you you know what i'm saying like i got faith i got potential i mean i got faith and they got potential so 
it's like, do you? You don't gotta have no pressure. Mm-hmm. I already know you gonna be great. You know what I'm saying? They just got you. Just got know that yourself. So I just really don't be trying to put no pressure on the for real. Yeah, that's dope. Mm-hmm. Now I want to talk. I'm super excited about this because I'm a mom and I know you got kids. Yeah. And you have three sons. So how is yeah. it being a father and pursuing a music career? Uh, it's lit. Like, I'm going to keep 100. Everybody be saying, like, I know it's hard. Like, I don't, it's, it ain't really hard. I mean, they got a good mother. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. It's not really hard. It get hard sometimes. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like I always wanted some. So it's like some I feel like. I gotta have, I gotta have my son. Yeah. I, oh, I gotta have some. You know, like they inspired me to be like, man, be different shit for. Them. Yeah. Now, if you would have had a daughter, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a different. That's a different. That's a different league right there. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I got a little sister though, so I know the expectations, but. I don't want. I don't want to no do it though. Girls, crazy. hey, you can't. Say, you can never say never, cause you just never. Nah, know. for sure. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Never know. <laughs> no, yeah, I will say, like being a mom myself, daughters are a handful. Such a handful. Yeah, for sure. I know for sure they are. <laughs> now, what has being a father taught you about life? Uh, just. Not living in a moment is just like you think about you just think about everything that you did and like like damn I could have went a whole different way I could have did something totally different just being focused and just having just different people in your life having just your father in your life you know what I'm saying and just that I know that it it could be great it could be you know what I'm saying it could be a better man than me for real. Mhm. And you know, considering the fact that you did get locked up at an early age, how important is it for them to have the childhood that you didn't have? Yeah, I mean that's. I be feeling like that's what it is too. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I know for a fact they never gonna get locked up though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I I just feel like, but for my sons, I just feel like. Boys gonna be boys. I'm gonna do my best to make sure they great men. But I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell them my story, tell them what I went through, and then pray they on, they on. You know what I'm saying? Try to be like me. Yeah, I feel that. Now, I do want to ask you this question because it's just been on my mind. <laughs> so, um, are you familiar with the song "WAP" that's been like everywhere? Yeah. With Hardy B. I ain't really listen to it though, cause like I mean I've been hearing about it, but. That's typical Cardi and Megan. <laughs> so it's like when I'm when you, even when you listening to it, like when I only listen to like thirty seconds of it. I'm like, man, I don't I don't listen to stuff like that, bro. But I be feeling them. I be feeling how they coming. <laughs> now <laughs> you know it's controversy surrounding that right now because you got one. I know I won't I won't want my sister listening to that though. You wouldn't want your sister listening to yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's like some of my music I tell my sister not to play. Like some stuff they it's not for them to hear. Like how I be feeling. Ah, okay. So I'm gonna make you pick a side because on one side we got the dudes that are like, Y'all shouldn't be rapping about that. There's kids listening to that. Then we got the other ones that's like dudes rap about their stuff all the time, rapping about having sex with women, like so I just feel like the person you shouldn't just, it's whoever controlling the music, you can't be letting them listen to it. But they not wrong for making that, because that's what sells. Yeah. But if you a mother on top of your daughter, like, of course they might hear, but you shouldn't be playing it in the car with them dancing to it. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Of course, they, yeah. now, now they going to be turned up to it. So I don't know, man. It's just, it's crazy. But yeah. You, so, can't, you can't be mad at somebody listening to music, though. Music not going, it, it, it's not going to turn somebody's life completely down, up and down. Yeah, I feel that. I feel exactly where you're coming from. Now, as an artist for the year of 2020, what would you say is like one important goal that you want to knock out? Uh, just making good music and 
like just making my fans happy. It's not. I don't. I'm not really trying to say like I'm trying to. I just want to make good music and just be successful. I'm not trying like have my base my success off like uh, tracks and all that stuff. But I'm definitely trying to do that. But I just want to make good music and just keep leveling up and being successful. That's dope. And you will. You're basically speaking it all into existence right now. So Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's gonna happen for sure. Yeah, facts. And before we head out, I do wanna thank you once again for tapping in with Dirty Glove Vaster. It was a pleasure speaking with you as well. No, I appreciate you having me. Make sure you take care, wear your mask. All that stuff. All right, I appreciate you too. Yes, I do want to get a picture with you though. I'm trying to figure out how I can stop the recording because I don't want them to put this in here. Hold on.